Did you know that Myrtle Beach, South Carolina got its name from the winner of a Name the Town contest back in 1900? Well, you do now. Hey there, my name is Bill Marion and this is A Nose for Life. In this video, I'm going to be sharing a lot of facts about Myrtle Beach and sharing some fun Myrtle Beach conversation as well. As you can imagine, since that contest, Myrtle Beach has changed a lot. But for the past few decades, it's been one of the top vacation destinations in the U.S. While the soft sand, premier fishing, and 61 miles of coastline put Myrtle Beach on the map, these days it's famous for a lot more, including golf tourism. As people from all over the world come to Myrtle Beach to play on one of the areas amazing golf courses. Tourists recognize Myrtle Beach for its outstanding shopping, calabash seafood, and live entertainment. Myrtle Beach is a family-friendly beach town as there is something fun for people of all ages. And by the way, the word myrtle in Myrtle Beach refers to wax myrtles. Wax myrtles are native to South Carolina and other states in the southeast part of the U.S. Here at Myrtle Beach, wax myrtles are everywhere. Now listen, I'm not a Myrtle Beach expert. I'm just a tourist with a cell phone camera and a YouTube channel making this video just for you. So you're welcome. However, if if you're planning a Myrtle Beach vacation, watch all of this video until the very end as you might find it useful while making plans. Leave your questions in the comment section and we'll try to help. If you're just getting back from a Myrtle Beach vacation, leave your recommendations in the comments and help us all out. Finally, if you live in the Myrtle Beach area, let us know if I'm getting anything wrong. This is a fun video and I know you're going to enjoy it. As always, there are links in the description, so go ahead, hit the like button, and welcome to the Grand Strand, Myrtle Beach. first time I visited Myrtle Beach was with my parents when I was a kid. I vacationed here when I was in my 20s too. Carolyn and I visited Myrtle Beach the first year we were married and later we brought our kids here as Myrtle Beach has something to offer everyone in the family, especially if your family loves golf. Myrtle Beach is a hub for golfing with over a hundred golf courses in the surrounding area. But maybe you're like me and mini golf is more your speed. Well, in that case, you're in luck. Myrtle Beach is the mini golf capital of the world. <laughs> There are more mini golf courses per square mile here than anywhere else in the universe. There are 50 mini golf courses at Myrtle Beach, and they're building more. So if you absolutely love mini golf, well, then you need to vacation at Myrtle Beach. Now, if you've ever been to the ocean, you know that beach towns up and down both U.S. coastlines have beach accessory stores. Not to be outdone, Myrtle Beach has more than a few beach accessory stores from which to choose. There are so many beach accessory stores at Myrtle Beach that it's become a category of shopping all by itself.
just because you love shopping doesn't necessarily mean you're good at beach store shopping or beach store hopping. Because whether it's name brand or generic, you have to pay careful attention to the price. For example, let's say you're needing sand toys for your perfect day at the beach. You might be tempted to think that you'll pay less money at a beach accessory store that offers 50% off and looks like an interstate fireworks store. But on this trip, we found that things like sand buckets and shovels were less expensive at name brand beach accessory stores than actual discount stores. When visiting Myrtle Beach, the sun is free, the sand is free, and yes, the ocean is free, but everything else is for sale. You might think you're here for the sand, salt, water, and sunshine, but this beach town is all about shopping. You think you're hiding it, but you're not. You are a tourist. Sooner or later, one of these beach accessory stores are going to get you. So whether you're needing sand buckets or sand shovels, t-shirts, or beach towels, why not make a game of it and go beach store hopping? When you walk in the door, you're going to want to buy things that you didn't even know you needed. There are at least 425 hotels in the Myrtle Beach area, so that means there are plenty of options to fit your preferences and your vacation budget. On average, a room at Myrtle Beach will cost you about $200, but that's a little deceiving. I'm sure you already know the cost of lodging everywhere fluctuates, depending on what time of year you're making plans. And that's especially true when planning a vacation. Peak season, or when you're going to pay the most money for a room, begins in June and continues through August. The least expensive time to book a hotel room at Myrtle Beach and most other vacation destinations is in September. Historically, Myrtle Beach has offered the least expensive beach vacation on the Atlantic. And for the most part, that's still true. But if you haven't booked a beach vacation in a few years, since let's say before 2020, then you can expect some sticker shock, even at Myrtle Beach. We use a brand rewards program because that works for us. The perks are great, and we always know what to expect when we check in. Our motto on any trip is the old cliche, know before you go. So while planning any vacation, do your homework and know what to expect. And you'll have a great time. The very first state park in South Carolina was Myrtle Beach State Park. We thought about visiting this state park, and then we were like, nah, maybe next time. Instead, we checked out the boardwalk. Myrtle Beach's boardwalk is just over a mile long between two of the town's piers. It's different than the boardwalk of, let's say, Virginia Beach. Now, both boardwalks are nice, but the one here on Myrtle Beach feels intentionally retro, and it's very charming. We are here in April, so it's busy, but not crowded, warm, but not hot. I guess you could call it a perfect day for a walk in the boardwalk. Don't hate, you'll have your time. Seriously, we had a blast just walking the boardwalk. During peak season, it does get very hot and very crowded, but it's always fun. In a recent video, I said that I didn't like Ferris wheels, and let me clarify, I don't like riding Ferris wheels because, well, they're boring. But this Ferris wheel is so photogenic, and it seems like I've seen this Ferris wheel someplace else. There are 2,000 restaurants here at Myrtle Beach and certainly seafood is on the menu. Specifically, Calabash style seafood. Calabash style seafood is fried seafood but lightly battered with just the right amount of grease. Okay, there's probably a lot more to Calabash. In fact, if you have a better definition of Calabash, let us know in the comments. I just know that it's good and while you're visiting Myrtle Beach, we recommend staying away from the enormous all-you-can-eat themed buffets. After a long day of fun and sun, you'll be tempted, but that's gross. And don't eat at the same chain restaurant 
restaurants you'll find at home. Instead, take a drive south to Merle's Inlet, the seafood capital of South Carolina. It's just a 20-minute drive. There you'll find about a dozen or more restaurants from which to choose, and you'll love every single one of them. You'll have a great time. For several years, the Myrtle Beach marketing team has been calling Myrtle Beach the Grand Strand. Various Myrtle Beach websites, articles, journals, magazines, and even coupon books seem to be running with this nickname, saying that Myrtle Beach is popularly and even historically known as the Grand Strand. They state that the name was first used poetically in a local newspaper article back in 1949, and I'm sure that's true. After all, an older definition of the word strand refers to an area of land that borders a body of water. Now, in most places in the U.S., we call that a beach. Anyway, if you're planning a trip to Myrtle Beach anytime soon, trust me, you're going to see the Grand Strand used in Myrtle Beach ads again and again. As if it's as ancient as Blackbeard the Pirate. Okay, look, I've been coming here since I was five years old and this is the first time I've ever heard or seen Myrtle Beach referred to as the Grand Strand. The city of Myrtle Beach's website mentions that Myrtle Beach has been called Long Bay, Withers, and Newtown. But like me, they must have forgotten all about the Grand Strand. Or the marketing team was swinging for the fences and got carried away with its world building. Building, or they just made it up. But really, it's fine. Everything is fine. Myrtle Beach can make up any nickname it wants to for itself and pretend it's historical. And besides, what do I know? Maybe the locals have been calling it the Grand Strand since 1949 or since Blackbeard even. There are so many things to do here that I would have to dedicate my entire channel to Myrtle Beach to try and cover it all. This whole area is a vacation destination. And if you're not from this area, it's likely that you called this area Myrtle Beach, when we all know it's called the Grand Strand. Anyway, despite all the things you can do at Myrtle Beach, sometimes it's the simple things that are the most fun and provide the most lasting memories. One of our favorite activities while visiting any beach is flying kites. And we started flying kites together on one of our first trips to Myrtle Beach. The kite Carolyn is flying now is special because mom gave it to her almost 20 years ago while enjoying a Myrtle Beach vacation with the whole family. Myrtle Beach is so amazing that I'm releasing two more videos about the Grand Strand. I call it Pigeon Forge on the Water. In my next Myrtle Beach video, I'm going to discuss some fascinating connections between Pigeon Forge, Tennessee and Myrtle Beach. And soon I'll be releasing a video about another one of my favorite activities at Myrtle Beach, pier fishing. So if you haven't already, make sure you're subscribed and that you've clicked the bell for notifications. I want to thank you so much for watching this video, and here are some other videos I think you'll enjoy. Don't forget to leave a comment as it really helps our channel. From the Grand Strand, my name is Bill Marion, and this is A Nose for Life.